Let's do some more advanced inverse normal work. I like this joke right here. <laughs> I need to get some socks from your drawer. Uh, you probably don't want to do that. Oh yeah? How probably? Uh, 0.98. Sample size? 500. Center deviation? 0 0.021. <laughs> Notice that's a very high probability, lots of sample, and a very small standard deviation that tells you it's a very good mean. Because, hmm, well played. <laughs> All right, so let's just revise again. So if we knew the mean, the maximum, the standard, uh, sorry, the minimum, the maximum, the mean, the standard deviation, what do we do then? Well, we use normal CDF. And what does that tell us? That tells us the probability. So that's what this told us. That was very useful. Okay, so that was one of the things we've been working on here with normal CDF. Okay, so that's been one thing. Now, if we knew the area under the curve, and by the way, remember, this only works for areas to the left. Yeah, remember, it only works for area to the left. So only if we know about that. And if we knew the mean, if we knew the standard deviation, then we can do what's called inverse norm inverse normal, and that tells us the x value. Okay, so that's what this did for us. So now we've got those two things. So I'm just trying to remind you when we use them, because otherwise it gets a bit confusing as to like what should you do. So this is the goal, is, is if you know these, then you do those. But what if it's more advanced where maybe you don't know the mean, or maybe you don't know the standard deviation? I mean, if you don't know the x, it's easy to use inverse normal. But what if you don't know the mean or the standard deviation? Like, what if you're not told those? Then, then you can't use this. Or can you? That's the whole point of this whole point here. Today we're going to be doing standardized normal variables. Like this, that test was really hard. Friend, by the way, someone wrote friend wrong, didn't they? I mean, it should be like this. Yeah, the problems on the back are really hard. Like, the what? <laughs> All right, so. There exist some tables of values, so people have actually figured these out. This has been solved, where, you know, if you, keep in mind, this would be really complicated to do, though, if you did it for every combination of every mean and every standard deviation. So instead, what they've done is they've made the mean zero, they made the standard deviation one, this is the key thing, okay? And then what we can do is we can uh, then find the area to the left again still. So maybe we find this right here, and we say, hey, what if we want the area Again, to the left, okay? So this will be something called a Z value. This is what I'm gonna be showing you here. Now, I just wanna state something really important here, that this right here, we have to make the mean, so when we're working with these on our calculator, we must make the mean equal to zero, and we must make the standard deviation, let me just write this down, because this is so important, okay? We wanna make the standard deviation sigma equals one. We must do this. If we're gonna do a standard normal, so the idea is so we have tables for these. As long as the mean is zero and the standard deviation is plus one, then we have tables for all these things where the area is to the left. So again, still areas to the left. Always, always, always. Okay? This is still really important. Areas are still to the left. Okay, we're only counting things to the left. We have this little thing called a z value. And z is equal to x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. This is something you get in your formula booklet, thank goodness. So you don't have to memorize this. You look this up. There you go. That's good to know. So what this tells you then is we can look this up. We can find this out. Because see, what we do is we first, we first set the mean and the standard deviation to zero and one. We're gonna use our calculator to tell us a Z value. See this value below which we have that area we were putting in. We can then use this equation to sort out what is the real mean and what is the real standard deviation. So let me just explain it again. So if you're given a probability and you want X or the mean or the standard deviation, but you know two of them, you use this inverse norm, okay? However, like I just said, you make sure you put in mean equals zero and standard deviation equals one. This is really important, okay? We're gonna do inverse norm with these. And what does that tell you? That spits out a Z value. 
Okay. Then you use your equation for z. So z equals x minus mu over sigma. You use that equation then to figure out what you needed. So if you needed sigma or mu. So again, just to remind you, pro tip, you use the mean equals zero. Use the standard deviation equals one. And like I just said, if you're worried about like, oh no, 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 but I know the mean. The mean is uh, 15. I just need to find a standard deviation. Trust me, still make the mean zero, standard deviation one. That gets you a z value. Then you use this equation, and then you use what you do know to figure out what you don't know. If that's confusing, it might be. You have to practice a little bit. But let me show you an example. By the way, we're going to be doing something called, um, you know, assuming that the gradient, uh, the, sorry, the grades of the student are normally distributed. Now, Americans, they call this like, are you grading on a curve? Because there we're forcing the distribution to be a bell curve. You know, we're, we're forcing it to be a normal distribution. I disagree with doing this because why should they necessarily be normally distributed? And also, it's a little bit unfair because what if a student, you know, what if the whole class does really, really well? What if the average is like, I don't know, 80% and one student gets like 78%? Well, they're actually going to get pushed back according to this. So I don't like the idea of grading on a curve. So I like this. Can you curve my grade? Sure. <laughs> that is going to really curve the F. Ha <laughs> ha. So. Let's just say here, when teacher assumes that the students are going to have normally distributed results, I disagree with that, but oh well, and knows that 80% uh, of the students are going to pass. So right away, if I do this, then I could say something like, I don't know what that's going to be, but something like this right here. So we're going to set this here to be 80%. So that area right there will be 0 0.8. I know it's somewhere over here because over here and to the right would have been 50%. Well, it's a little bit more, so something like that. Now the mean is unknown. The standard deviation is 13, so that's I don't know the mean. I do know the standard deviation, oh, it's 13. And I do know that the pass mark is 51. So actually, I know this marker here is 51. So what's the mean? How do you do this? Well, this is a perfect example of using this inverse normal here. So let me just redraw it again. This time I'll draw, oh, that was a really bad normal curve. This right here. Again, I know that this value here is 51. And because I know this value over here is 80%, right, that's what I, I kind of knew. I knew this value right here is 80%. Well, then what do I know about this? Because remember I said with inverse normal, just like with the other ones, you always take the area to the left. So if the area to the right is 0.8, what's the area to the left? That must be 0 0.2. That's the important part here. So what I'm going to do then, watch carefully. I'm going to go inverse norm. And I'm going to put in, make sure I put in the area, which is going to be 0 0.2. Right? That's going to be the area below. I'm going to put in the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. Why do I do that? I mean, I already know the standard deviation is 13. I do this because I want to get a z value. That's why. So I'm going to get a z value. Or if you're American, you'll say z. So uh, let's just do this. So I'll go to a calculator, I'll go to menu, and I say, give me probability, give me distributions, give me inverse normal. And I want the area to be 0 0.2. And do you notice, by the way, at least on the TI Inspire, they automatically set this to be 0 and 1 for you. You might have wondered before why that was. That's because if you put it with 0 and 1, this gives you a z value. Boom, so the z value is uh, minus 0 0.841621. Minus 0.8416, was it 21? 621. Okay. Now, why does this help me? Well, it turns out this does. I just wanted to convince you. So, what am I doing with this? Well, what I'm going to do now, even though I set this right here to be 0 and this to be 1, now I can use the equation for z. So, z, if I go over here, look it up on my formula booklet, z is x minus mu over sigma. Ah, okay. So, x minus mu over sigma. Now I put in the numbers that I really do need. So I want sigma by itself, so, uh, sorry, mu by itself. So I'll multiply both sides by sigma, I guess. That'll get me z times sigma will equal x minus mu. I'll probably put my mu over to the left side, so I'll get mu equals x, and then I'll subtract that, so it'll be minus z sigma. So in other words, I'll say that mu is gonna be, let's see, x, which was 51, minus my then 0.84, oops, that's really bad writing, right? 1, 6, 2, 1, times 
um, sigma, which was 13. Let me try to do this on my calculator. I'm going to keep all the numbers though, so I'm going to say 51 minus, in brackets, answer times 13. That's one way to do it, right? That'll be, this should be a plus then. And we'll see what I get. I end up with 61.9. Can you see that right there? That's 61.9, three significant figures. So that's the mu then. Mu is approximately 61.9. That's my average. Now you can check if you did it right, right? Because you can go, you can go through and, um, well, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can do it. You could actually say, hey, let's see if this really works if I really get 80%. So watch this, what I could do. I could start with this right here and say, what if I, now that I know my number here for my mean, I can actually go ahead and find my um, normal CDF. In other words, what's my area under the curve going to be? If I start at 51, I go to, I don't know, 10 bazillion, just lots of zeros here. I make my mean equal to the number that I just got, so 61.9. I make my standard deviation equal to 13. What do I hope my probability is? I hope the probability is around 0.8, or at least close to it, because I've rounded a little bit. Let's see if I get 0.8. Oh, thank God. You see, I know it worked. So you can actually check if you did it right by doing this. So this is a way to solve this, and hopefully this helps you out to understand how to do more advanced uh, inverse normal stuff by using the standard normal variable, this z value. Just remember, you got to make mu 0, you got to make standard deviation 1 until you get your z value. After that, then you use the proper values to find what you need.